Hello and welcome back to my channel, I'm Matthew Quilliam and in this video we're going to be exploring what a banjo-lele is. Now most of you will be familiar with a standard ukulele, this is actually quite a big ukulele, it's a baritone uke, um, but not so much on the banjo-lele. You might have seen them around and thought what, what is that? or you might be interested in picking one up to play. And so in this video I'm going to run down some of the most uh, common repertoire on the banjo lele, explore what can be done on it, and why you might consider getting one. So the banjo lele, a uh, little bit of history, was invented when uke players in the 1910s, 20s, 30s, 40s were so quiet that they couldn't be heard in both large theatre settings when they didn't have an amplification, or in recordings, where recording technology was still quite primitive compared to today's standards. And so they needed a form of projection, and a guy called Alvin Keach came up with the concept of the banjo lele. He took the neck of a ukulele and put it on the head of a banjo, which is this bit, which traditionally is a calfskin, or this is a plastic drum, which is then stretched out across a pot, and that is what creates the sound as opposed to an acoustic chamber where the sound goes in a hole and then resonates inside the body and is projected back out. This method of projection is a lot louder than a sound chamber like that and it is therefore much more effective if you're in an unamplified setting to be able to be heard. I will play these often when I'm playing outdoors at a gig or in a place where there's no, not much amplification. Not only are they loud, but of course they have a different tone. They do sound a bit like banjos, although not in the sort of five-string bluegrass sense, but more in the style of a four-string tenor banjo, which strums in big bands and plays jazz and things. So, in that respect, they sound like a banjo, but they still maintain the ukulele element. Banjos are tuned in fifths, which is something that I have explored in a previous video all about tunings. There's a link in the description below which you can check that out. But essentially, a banjo is tuned in fifths, which makes it a lot louder, whereas the ukulele is tuned in fourths and a third, which means the tuning is more closed, which makes it quieter. So it doesn't project as loudly. Also, of course, with the ukulele shapes and voices, it sounds like a ukulele, because you're getting those uke voices, those uke sounds across, despite having a banjo tone. So if you're familiar with ukulele chords, you'll know that that's a C chord, got a G chord, F, G7, A minor. All those chords are exactly the same on a banjo lele, so you can play them in exactly the same way. And in fact, you could probably even play the same uke repertoire that you play in, say, a ukulele group. You'll just sound a bit different. Of course, though, the banjo lele can be considered not just an extension of the ukulele, but an instrument in its own right. And one of the most famous uke players was a guy called George Formby. Now, he started on the ukulele, but went to the banjo lele during its sort of high time, and he played something more like this. This is an Abbott Monarch ukulele. This is actually built by the same man who built George Formby's ukulele. Uh, although it was made at a slightly later date, this particular one I have here. And as you can see, it's quite different. It has this resonator around the edge of the head, which pushes the sound... Well, if you look at this one, the sound goes out the back. But with this one, the sound goes out the back, but it is then caught by an additional chamber, which then pushes the sound forwards again. And you might notice as well as I have a capo on the second fret. Traditionally, Formby played in D tuning, which is where you tune all the strings two semitones, or a tone higher than G, C, E, A, A, D, F sharp, B. A, D, F sharp, B. And that is a tradition that most George Formby banjo lele players continue to this day. If you go to Blackpool, the George Formby Society, the largest gathering of banjo leles in the country, probably the world, then lots of people will play in these higher tunings. This again is a remnant from the old times when they needed projection. Higher tunings project further, and that obviously helps with the whole idea of the banjo lele being a loud instrument. Now in the George Formby circles, uh, you'll often see vintage instruments like this recycled over sort of newer, more modern banjo leles like this. This is called a Duke 10. And the reason for that is they do have quite different tones. They were handmade in around the 20s, 30s and 40s, 
But then production stopped and their popularity ceased, and of course with amplification there was no real need for an instrument like this. And then in the latest ukulele uh, craze, people are playing ukes because they don't, they, we have microphones, we don't need this banjo technology. But then, of course, there was a bit of a renaissance for the banjo lele, but technology has changed in not only amplification, but instrument building as well. And the techniques used are different. So nowadays you'll more likely find a plastic head and a wider head, and the armrest will be above to allow you to play like this, rather than some more traditional banjo lele players who will come from underneath the, the bridge and play like this. So, if you want to play sort of Formby style under the banjo like this, right quite high up on your chest, then I'd recommend a vintage instrument. But if you want something that you can really easily rest on your knee, something like this will do you fine. Another thing as well is this is quite a lot bigger because the tenor ukulele has risen in popularity over recent years due to the fact that it gives you more finger space. And this is a tenor scale banjolele. Most older banjoleles are soprano or concert scale. So that's something else that the modern banjoleles bring. If you want space and you like a tenor scale, then you might really enjoy the Duke 10 or other banjolele models of this size. Something as well that modern panjaleles have that vintage don't is a pickup. You can actually put a jack socket in here and there's a little pickup under the bridge and that allows you to go through a PA system. So for that reason, the technology used to make the banjo is more focused on tone rather than projection. And as such, these instruments have greater sustain. The sound carries a lot farther and a lot longer than the short short, snappy, sharp sustain or lack of on these instruments. The sound disappears very quickly. Now, banjolele doesn't just have to be George Formby repertoire. You can, of course, play other banjo styles, such as bluegrass, uh, even though it's got four strings as opposed to a five-string bluegrass banjo. You can still play similar techniques, and I'm actually starting to learn bluegrass and sort of finger-picking a style uh, of that type. But if you want to hear more, then I would recommend watching Matt Hicks, who actually has one of these very instruments, who plays that style. Alternatively, uh, you can obviously also use this to play non-formby jazz. You can sort of use it uh, to play jazz chords. That kind of thing as well. So there we go, that's my introduction to the banjolele really. Uh, if you'd like to know more then do leave a comment and I'll happily answer any questions that you like. There's also loads of banjolele music out there so I'd recommend checking it out and listening to it and see if you want to play music of that style. And if you do, consider getting a banjolele. You really have two options, either the modern one or a vintage one. It kind of just depends what school you sort of tend to gravitate towards. But uh, until the next video, I hope you all keep safe and well. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.